pre-K through 12th grade. Right now, we're pre-K through 11th. When we first uh, began our campus as, a, as an operation, we're going into our third year. It was pre-K through 9. And we added one grade each year to be up to where we are now, which is the 11th grade. Next year, we'll add the 12th grade. Uh, so we'll have a clear articulation across the three campuses. Uh, the campuses are aligned through uniform standards. We're considered a contract school. So we still exist under the domain of the Kansas City, Missouri School District as a district, but we have decentralized, so we actually are autonomous as an uh, independent district. So we're not under the governance system of the Kansas City, Missouri School District. Uh, that group that uh, Baba Wall was talking about earlier through NBUF, and you, have, you saw a Jamal Webster on the slide, is actually the local chair, the Kansas City chair of NBUF. And now he has assumed the leadership role of the chair of our board of directors, which is called ASETI. And ASETI is the acronym for African Center Task Force Incorporated. So our board is an incorporated 501c3 organization that holds a five-year contract within the Kansas City, Missouri School District based on performance standards, management standards, and budgetary standards. Uh, since the inception of our campus, we've met AYP each year. Uh, we've actually exceeded the terms of AYP because for us, that's just somebody else's test. And we use the test to show that we're better than the rest. So the test is not a measure that we're fighting. Uh, we actually embrace that. And we reemphasize that to our scholars because we're about excellence. And I always say it's good to be great and it's great to be good, but that doesn't reflect excellence. So we want excellence to be our benchmark. Uh, we look at 85% as the standard for proficiency on our campus in terms of having the majority of our students in the proficient and advanced stages of learning. Uh, we do have a scope and sequence that's pre-K through 12th grade aligned. Uh, we do that through four areas that we call passageways. And the passageways are aligned just like a rites of passage, that there's in post and ex post, uh, out post, that relate to the alignment of the passageways. We have a uh, passageway one, which is pre-K through first grade. Passageway 2, which is 2nd through 4th grade. Passageway 3, which is 5th grade through 7th grade, and actually triangulates our 5th grade, our standalone 6th grade building, and then our upper campus, which houses 7th through 11th grade. And then we have PW4, which is passageway 4, which is 8th grade up. Our upper campus is aligned as an early college high school. So that means that our students can receive up to 60 hours of college credit in addition to their high school diploma. So we do that through a partnership with the local community college providers and some of the other university partners that have uh, embedded their interest in our work of building community. So we've extended that community relationship piece out. Uh, the passageway model really focuses on two strands. The strand one is intent, strand two is content. The intent is really focusing on the transformation of character and consciousness. Uh, that's the component that we really look at social behaviors, uh, deviant behaviors, behaviors that are isphytic, opposed to meiotic, uh, using precepts like the Nguza Saba as the means to frame how we work, how we build relationships, and how we support the work of African-centered education. So we don't cherry pick any of our students. Uh, anyone within the boundaries of the Kansas City, Missouri School District can apply. Uh, we have less than a 1% turnaway rate. So we accept the majority of the students who come to us. Uh, currently, we have 800 students on campus. And our goal is that we're going to double that. But we want it to be a very organic process. Uh, as a public school, we are aligned to the state standards because we do receive ADA money, which is the revenue from average daily attendance. So that money is bundled into our contract. And we've gone through a three-phase plan with our contract around capital improvement. So phase one was a 1.9 million upgrade on our lower campus, which houses the Dr. Asa G. Hilliard Culture and Performing Arts Center. We are just completing phase two, which was a $3 million makeover of our upper campus and our quad campus. And then we'll have a phase three that will be coming online. Uh, because we are a state-funded program, we align the state standards, which are called GLEES, and that's grade level expectations to African-centered GLOW, because we literally want our students to GLOW. And the GLOW is the acronym for grade level outcomes. And those are aligned as a scope and sequence 
across those passageways. So I think I'll stop at this point. Um, I'm going to go over from here. Uh, I can elaborate a little bit more with the, uh, questions from the audience. Okay. One of the, one of the questions that came up uh, during the break to me was, how were you able to do this? And I think um, uh, Dr. World spoke to the role of NBUF in uh, Kansas City, but I would like for you, Dr. World, to maybe spell that out a little different because what I saw when I was there was the relationship between your parents, your strong community, and your political uh, active group, your, your activists in the community. So would you like to speak a little bit more to the role of NBA in and well, I think that relationship with it's a deeper than the role of NBA is understanding politics in America. And so for for, for for a period from the nineteen sixties really up to the seventies when the independent school movement unearthed itself and we sort of said after G two Yuzi was fired in Ocean Hill, Brownsville, and the East was established, Ipe here, and other cadres similar to that in the Pan-African nationalist formation in the United States that have established these independent schools. So we kind of said, well, let's, let's work on the independent school. And that was a very good project, remains a good project, the project that has uh, 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 really our ultimate objective is to create our own school system for African people in the world, our African university. But the reality is the majority of our kids are in the public school system. The majority of our people uh, still are affected by the public school system. Uh, large numbers of our people are hired in the public school system from administrators right on down to janitors. There are billions of dollars of budgets across the United States. So the question becomes, how do you adjust your politics and your organizing? And so what NBUF did was just provide, at least in Kansas City, an excellent model of how you infuse politics into acquiring space in the liberation project. This is not the ultimate end. It's beautiful that they're doing what they're doing, but these white folks could take the money back tomorrow if they wanted to. So let's be clear about this. Uh, but they haven't been able to do it thus far because the community is organized around the project. And one of the things I think we need to observe across the country, we're not organized on an objective as we were for a period of time around the African-centered education movement. We've sort of been, uh, I don't know if we lost spirit, we got tired, we got old, we ran out of gas, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But politics is very important. Politics, as Dr. Andy always points out, determines who gets what, where, when, and how. And in the Kansas City model, they took over the school board. They have an elected school board. Three or four of the members of the school board right now are all involved members. That's why they, get, they got the contract, okay? So, I mean, it's just that simple. So in Chicago, we, we haven't recovered, really, since Harold Washington died. That was 1987, we haven't recovered. Uh, in Detroit, they haven't really recovered since Colvin Young died. Uh, and, and, and other cities of this nature, we got been out of position based around politics. We went different ways. We know that we can't accomplish very much in our organizing if we don't have some semblance of unity. So when ASCAG went to Egypt in 1987, that shook up the whole world around African-centered education. So everybody came back ready to go. So that kind of energy and spirit in a mass way, we have to get back to. So politics plays a very important role, but none of what Kevin is talking about in this school could have occurred without political organizing. So the politics has to be linked to the intellectual work, and the organizers have to be trained to understand the intellectual work so they can be fused together. And for a moment in time, as I attempted to point out today, from Portland up to the latter part of the 1990s, the African-centered education project was uh, at the top of the agenda, and I'm suggesting we need to put it back at the top of the agenda and start organizing. If we did it before, we can do it again.
school board and that appointed school board. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, it's important for That's organizers right. to understand the different forms of how public education is administered in different cities across the country. Some have elected, Chicago is appointed, et cetera, et cetera. But that's all part of the organizing. Uh, I can't think of any city, and it, see, there's another factor here in Kansas City that we haven't mentioned called the W.E. Du Bois Learning Center. And the W.E. Du Bois Learning Center is an after-school tutoring program that started off in the early 1970s that uses volunteers to tutor young people in math and science primarily, and later on it expanded to cultural enrichment. This is the foundation of all the educational work that has occurred in Kansas City the last 40 years, led by Leon Dixon and, and uh, Samari Grace, who are both involved members, by the way. They have three acres of land. They've been working on this experiment prior to Envo, prior to anything. And it was in their physical facility that the idea in 1988, it just dawned on us that lights were turned on, that Envo, after all these eight years of sitting in a room together, that we should really get on top of the Portland model and bring it to the uh, attention of the public across the country because up to that point, nobody really knew. Portland, Oregon, where the hell is Portland, Oregon? You only got 40,000 black people in Portland, Oregon. Who was Ron Herndon? Nobody knew about the project. He knew about ACER. So INBA, for, for about three years, just popularized the idea. So it's a lot of history here that has to be written about in terms of organizing on the one hand and linking with the, our intellectuals, our scholars, on the other. We, are right here at the Center for Inner City Studies, our thrust is scholar activism. You can't have one without the other. They have to be joined to the hip, and I think the African Center Education Movement still has that formula for our organizing through ASCAG, through INVOV. I'm not the chairman, but I was just in Jersey City last week with a hundred hip hop people, they let me, they had nerve to let me on the panel and I took over. I still hip hop. <laughs> <laughs>